Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Anumba. Anumba. We're, doing, we're off to a great start today. It's Tuesday, first day of February, and I can't talk anymore. Uh, welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Glad you could join me today. Uh, today, we're going to be painting up a Honey Badger from the X23 and Honey Badger Marvel Crisis Protocol Character Pack. Uh, I've already done a Honey Badger in normal colors, so I thought it would be fun today to just kind of like reimagine this outfit and costume uh, as more of a traditional Wolverine ensemble. So we're going to dive in. We're going to use yellows, blues, blacks, and a little bit of white. We're going to knock this character out and give her an homage to Logan, her grandfather, I guess, sort of. Her clone granddaddy. So with that, let's go ahead and hop off me, get on the miniature, and let's get going because we've only got an hour. So I'm going to be using mostly um, Chimera colors today. I've got them on my well or on my wet palette. Uh, I used a little bit of warm yellow, uh, a tiny drop of black, and some cold yellow to create my first base coat for my yellow. And this just kind of makes a nice little warm ochre color that has some pretty good coverage, and of course will cover really well over our Zenith Prime as well. So my plan going into this is I want to kind of replicate the feel of Wolverine, uh, Logan Howlett. I want, to, I want to really capture the feel of the original Wolverine's kind of blue, yellow, and uh, black kind of costume. So we're going to play a little bit with what that means by using everything that's on the character. So my primary, like the, the largest amount of color is obviously going to be the yellow. So we'll kind of knock that out first, then we'll go back in. We'll mess with our blacks. Those will be the easiest colors to do because black is just so simple. And then we'll use blue for kind of the lining and then for some other parts. Now, normally this costume uh, that we chose for Honey Badger, her arms are bare, but I'm actually gonna paint the arms as if they're covered in a sleeve because when it comes to superhero costumes, um, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to tell half the time whether they have sleeves, no sleeves, because those form-fitting lycra spandex-like costumes, they look a lot like skin as well. So I'm just going to knock that in. Keep going. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend uh, and a really great last week. Looking forward to, for those who are wondering, I'm not going to be doing the version of Wolverine's costume where he has the blue underwear on the outside. I'm just going to go yellow. So a slightly more modern take, I guess, on... Wolverine's iconic look. <sighs> All right, so, but I hope everyone had a great weekend. I know LVO just occurred over this last weekend as well. We were kind of watching from the sidelines here in the Seattle area, a lot of folks from the dev team and other departments. We're interested in how all the events went. It sounds like everything went really swimmingly. It sounds like everyone stayed very safe, which is always the most important part. Uh, but overall, it seems like it was a very good time, and I'm glad that uh, folks got to get out there and play some games. After a long, long time in quarantine, next one up is going to be Adepticon. And as BK announced not too long ago, even though we, as studio members, won't be attending, uh, just due to some of the unknowns about COVID and where it'll be and stuff, uh, we still throw in a ton of support that way as well. So there will, if you're attending, stay safe, uh, but know that there's going to be a whole mess of great stuff and events and all that to keep you busy and occupied no matter which of our games you play. Uh, there's some very cool stuff for Crisis Protocol since that's what we're painting today. It should be a good time. And we'll continue to roll with the punches as the year continues, but it's already shaping up to be a much better year for in-person play and opportunities and all that stuff. So. The interior here, we'll get that yellow. Figure out what to do with this weird like upper belt thing. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with that. I kind of have a plan for everything else. But 
Maybe I'll do that black and I'll do the sides blue. That might work pretty well. So I'll just kind of knock that out. <clears throat> I'm going to do, let's see. So this shoulder is going to be blue. I'll do this as black. So I think I'm going to do this part. And I'm going to use the glove as of the end of my sleeve. So kind of using what's sculpted on the miniature to help define where I want this different kind of style of suit to go. So again, normally the arms are bare, just like Granddaddy Logan's arms are bare, but I want to have this covered. And one of the things that I did that was a little cheeky because obviously um, we talk about, you know, skin tight. You look at the way comics are drawn and those characters and stuff. They don't really take into account many times uh, microfolds in the cloth or anything like that. So they're, they're literally just anatomical forms with color on them. And that's a lot of the reason why it's so difficult to look so good in a uh, superhero costume because, you know, the costume is literally a thing in real life. It's not just your body being colored. Um, but what I did was a little cheeky is there's a... So there's a mold line from the pole that normally I would clean off right here. You can probably see it. I left that so it'll look like a seam on the, on the sleeve. Uh, and what that'll do is it'll, it'll give that kind of illusion that this isn't skin. Instead, it's two pieces of fabric that's been like sewn together or bunched up. Um, and so I'm just using the imperfections of the casting process, which we would normally clean up, as a little bit of a cheat so that my reimagining of this kind of classic costume here, will read slightly better. And I saved myself, you know, a minute or two of some minor cleanup and sanding that we always go through for everything else. Um, but I thought that might be a cheeky way to approach it. And because the line actually runs down the entirety of the arm and is just like so perfect, uh, it looks very intentional at this point. So that's what we went with. I think what I'm gonna do so the belt and the pouches I want to be blue. She has this kind of weird um, midriff belt. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the exterior part yellow. And if I don't like this, I can always go back. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the interior part probably black or maybe blue, we'll see. I'm gonna do the black parts last just because obviously black, I can cover literally anything I don't like <clears throat> or that didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to with the black. So uh, by saving that for last, I'll be able to just kind of like make my choices on the fly and see how the composition turned out and then go from there. All right, so I think we got oh, almost all the yellow right here. We got almost all the yellow here. Uh, <laughs> you can remove the mold lines. Yeah, that is possible. Uh, definitely something you should start with, you know, if you want to take that painting to the next level. Pull those off. Doesn't take very long. We've got a couple of good videos about how to do it if you've never done it before. But yeah, when it came to choosing Honey Badger's uh, look, we took a lot of the inspiration from the X-23 run that started in like 2018, I think. It was right after the Secret Empire stuff, um, after the return of Wolverine himself. He came back from the grave. And X-23 kind of gave up the mantle of Wolverine. She gave it back to everybody's favorite knucklehead. And so she took, uh, she started wearing the X-23 outfit, which we chose for the character because we wanted to do X-23 for the first round um, and save maybe all new, all different Wolverine for a later incarnation. <laughs> and uh, so that with that, we decided to also use that run as inspiration for our Honey Badger. And so this is heavily based off of the costume that she wears in that newer X-23 run. I don't know if it's the newest, 
Um, I think it's still, I think it's still the newest X23, but I've been a little behind on my Marvel Unlimited reading lately, so I could definitely be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, so we're going to come in here. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make these sections of the pants right here black, but um, we're going to start with blue because I want my blue undertone to be for my black anyway. And so that will make it easier anyway to do that. And the other part to that is, is that even if I do do that interior is black, I want the trim around it to be blue anyway. So this just kind of gets me everything I want in one go. A lot easier than if I did it the other way. Get a little bit more water on that blue. Um, I don't... So we've got new leaders coming for Criminal Syndicate. And everything else. I know behind on reading is part of my job. Um, certainly, you know, I think we're at the point with Crisis Protocol entering um, the third year, as it were, that fleshing out certain affiliations with new leaders and leaderships, uh, it's time. And we've, you know, we've gotten through a lot of those characters and we're kind of at a good point to do it. It wasn't necessarily a uh, purely intentional, like conscious choice. You know, not every affiliation is going to wind up with two leaderships. Um, as we've talked about, some affiliations are really kind of thought of and designed in a very limited capacity. And, you know, the expectation is, like we've talked about before on various mini extravaganza streams and stuff, you know, you start with that block and you say, okay, well, if this is it, then we develop in that way and we always leave ourselves you know growth to room to grow and all of that and interesting things to come back to but we do want to make sure you know an affiliation like the Midnight Suns or even Wakanda which hasn't seen uh, any kind of like significant expansion or growth since it launched um, will still be viable and fun and enjoyable for the people who want to play that and have its space in, in the game and then eventually, you know, uh, on a long enough timeline, I have no doubt we'd come back to everything and expand because the Marvel Universe is a very big and exciting place. And Lord knows there's tons of room to grow with either Midnight Suns or Wakanda. And I hope, you know, we get there sooner rather than later. But it's a time game and we can only make so much stuff. There's only so much bandwidth. <laughs> So um, we do have to always keep in the back of our minds, well, is this complete if we never came back and touched it? And then that's a really important question that we definitely try to answer with our playtesters and everyone else. And of course, the conceit is we know we're going to come back, but we don't know entirely when all the time. So it's just good to... Always keep that in the back of your mind. Makes everyone happier, makes the affiliations in the game more robust, and it's good to go. <sighs> Cannonball X-Force leadership, please. Wow. I have to be honest with you, I did not expect that one to come out today. Good old Cannonball. Where's Josh? He'll talk your ear off about Cannonball. Cannonball, boom, boom. Plenty of places to go here. Uh, and so for those wondering about this blue color, this is the Chimera uh, Phthalo Blue Green. So it's got the green shade to it. It is not the red shade. 
I like the green shade just because it's a more vibrant blue. Uh, and for this costume specifically, it felt like vibrant, bold, punchy blue was the way to go, but you could use the red shade just as easily and probably get great results. I'm just going for that really loud, comic-y contrast here. Doing my best to keep it Clean off the yellow. <clears throat> Let's come back and hit that section. Okay, so now let me go under here. Hit this. I hear Tony shuffling around. He might be doing something. Next wave, oh my gosh, now really where is Josh? We're talking next wave. You've all made Josh so happy today. Yeah, we did show also Bloodstone on a card. She's a very cool character. Certainly fits in. Oh. Clean up that little spill there. Good enough. We can come back in and fix that with our yellows later. Okay, and then I think actually I was gonna do I was gonna do the shoulders as blue. Do I want to do that now though? I think yeah. It's still still very much the inspiration here, so. Yeah, that the shoulder should be blue. The thing was, though, Tony, is that I was thinking, you know, like I was originally envisioning that the sides of the suit would be black, so then the blue on the shoulders would feel a little different. Uh, now I'm not so sure, though. Now I feel like she's blue all the way up the sides. I don't know if I like that, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I may go back. I may change those sides to black anyway, so like I said, doing the blue first is just cheats because... It gives us all. Oh, but I can't see. All these extra challenges when trying to do this on camera. I'm not even that. I'm, I mean, I'm no Dallas Kemp here. I can't paint with a brush in my mouth without using my hands. I've watched Dallas do that before. It was impressive. Oh, see, Dallas, you can't get in on the whole, like, wish listing thing in the chat. That's not fair. That's not fair. Okay. Come back over to this side. I just want to hit these piping lines with the blue. Fill that back in, too. So I'm not really doing washing today. We're kind of just doing more of a traditional base coat. I'm gonna get really quiet now because I'm trying to do this edging from a really weird angle. There we go. All right. <laughs> Wordle game. I, I'll be honest with you, this will probably really ruin whatever tiny amount of credibility I have on the internet, which is probably zero anyway. Um, oof. I don't even know how to play Wordle. I haven't even looked into it. I've seen it take the internet by storm, but... Tony, are your kids into Wordle? Are they doing the Wordles? No, it's my wife. Okay. I've seen enough. There aren't enough miniatures in Wordle, so my. Uh, no, that's it.
kind of doing my best here. That blue piping knocked out a little bit right now. We'll have to go back in and fix our yellow a little bit, but that won't be too bad because our ochre will cover pretty nice. So, kind of mute that back out. And then we'll go back in with our base yellow color. Kind of fix our little mistake areas. Just tighten up those lines. Like so. But yeah, if you want if you want wordle clues to whatever's coming next. <laughs> Tony could have a mic. Tony's had a mic before. I don't know why you don't have a mic now, Tony. Plus, if you have a mic, then Summer will have a mic, and then you can both, you know. You can both participate whenever you're running the streams. That's true. So, I'm in. Oh, all right. So, clean that up. Get that little gap between the belts. Oh, oh, this is when it gets weird because I can't turn the mini the way I want, so. Hit that, there we go. Okay, let's just do the belt. Oh, that's not the color I wanted. <clears throat> oh, Tony give you some color commentary. He's, he's a brutal critic. It would be really weird uh, to have Tony just sit there and to be able to hear him also give color commentary on the paints. He's reaching for the number two. Seems like a mistake. At this point in time, I'd be reaching for the number four. He's got a lot of area to cover. I wonder if that mistake will come back to bite him in the end. That's right. This is just poor clock management on his on his part, you know. There's a time and a place when you want to like run down the clock, but at this point in time, you don't want to have to be going back and second guessing your skin tones. A little thinner paint now would really save him a whole lot of thicker paint later in the long run. I think we're almost done with this blue coat. And then we'll start mixing up some highlights and knock things out. Okay. Then. Hit the piping on the suit here. Okay, pretty happy with that. Go back through here in a second. There we go. Taking up some of that. All right, now let's add some shading to our yellow. See what we got for that. All right. <clears throat> Clearly a Rams fan. Uh, I mean, she can't change the colors that, you know, Papa Logan wears here. Um, let's find a good yellow shade. Now I gotta go look at the paints. 
What do we got? What do we got? We can find like a. Uh, we're gonna be able to find a chestnut. Doesn't seem like it. <laughs> We got. We have so many colors. So so like everywhere. Oh wait, is that it? Uh, we can make that work, I guess. Or let's see what we find. Yeah, perfect. Some wood. All right, let's switch palettes really quick. All right, so I'm just gonna use some chestnut ink from Scale seventy five. And I want to add some yellow ink in with it, which is over here, not that one. It looked like yellow ink, it's not yellow ink. There we go. Intense yellow. I'm just gonna mix up kind of an oxide-y wash. A little bit on the orange side, looks pretty good. That'll work, I think. All right. Oh, yeah, you could fill out all the parts that I messed up. Tony knows how to do telestration. He could make that, he could make that a reality. All right. So let's just go in with this color. Something's really chattery over there. I don't know what it is, but it's something. It's this. Oh, it's you, you little paint thing. How weird. All right, so we're just gonna apply this wash everywhere. Again, working for shading and just kind of adding some nice deeper tones to our yellow color. We could have used purple for this, which would have been very artsy. But you can use purple wash over a yellow. It creates a pretty cool looking final effect. I, however, am using that chestnut ink mixed with a little yellow ink to create kind of an ochre, a little oxide -y wash. Doing my best not to get this on any of the blues. And then if we need to at some point, oh, I forgot to do the gloves. I gotta get the gloves blue. Do that next. Put that in. Jimmy DeHan33, awesome to hear that you're seeing a growth in your community now that folks can come out and enjoy the game and everything. We've got some very cool organized play stuff that's coming that I think a lot of Growing communities are really going to enjoy. Including the one that's going to be coming out with the X-Men stuff. So Honey Badger, X-23, Juggernaut, Colossus, Magic, all that good stuff. We got a organized play kit, which I think BK is going to be talking more about here soon at some point. Or I'll talk about it now. I don't know. BK can tell me what he wants me to do because I'm not entirely sure what he's posted and what he hasn't at this point. But the next, the next uh, organized play kit that is coming is a new Ultimate Encounter. It's a new cooperative Ultimate Encounter. Uh, so it's a perfect way to introduce new players to the game, to play with maybe folks who don't normally play miniatures games, like your partner or your kids or your mom, your dad, I don't know, your dog. Be a little tough with the dog, but it's still doable. Depends on how smart your dog is. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Well, I can talk about it. So the new event kit that's coming out is Unstoppable Colossus. So of course, with Colossus and Juggernaut coming out, we uh, wanted to take the opportunity to do something fun with that storyline. So Colossus has gotten the gem of Sidorak. He's gone a little bit crazy and is tearing up the town. 
and it is the crisis team's job to go in and stop him. Uh, he has a very cool AI, which dictates all of his movements. He builds momentum and becomes unstoppable. Uh, you have to effectively connect like kinetic dampening towers to slow him down. Uh, and that'll allow you to like deal damage to him and knock off his helmet so that Professor X, who's probably somewhere in the wings, can shut him down and calm him and uh, stop his rampage. But it's really fun. We actually used it to introduce a couple of folks from Asmodee who had never played Marvel Crisis Protocol before to the game, and they had a blast. Uh, so I'm really excited for that one. Will Pagani did a fantastic job masterminding it and uh, coming up with a pretty cool cooperative experience that utilizes a very, uh, a very easy AI system that feels very natural to what like Unstoppable Colossus wants to do, which is basically run through everything. All right. So, let me come back really quick. Do up this thing here. And it uses the Colossus miniature because it's the Unstoppable Colossus, but you could very easily, if you wanted to do the Unstoppable Juggernaut, just swap in the Juggernaut. Um, his bigger base size would make the, the encounter a little bit more challenging just because he would cover a bit more distance. Uh, but I don't think that it would be problematic at all from a gameplay standpoint since it is just for the fun of these. Okay. I think, I think, I think, I think we got to think about now what we want to do in black. And what we're going to keep blue, I think we're going to just thin out some of this. And we're going to come in. We are going to do the sleeves here. More black. So I just took the Chimera black, thinned it out with a bit of water, and I'm just going to start using it as a wash. And I'll build up. That black over the blue, and it'll give me a nice undertone, which will make my black feel very rich and alive because black in real life is defined by its highlight, and all blacks have kind of a color that undertones them. So you can use Dallas used green on his last on his rogue painting where he did an, his X Force uh, rogue, and that was super cool. We did Shadowlands Daredevil with a uh, with a red undertone the last time. I know the belt is supposed to be blue. I kind of like this triangle going on, so I might change my mind and turn these. Or make the pouches black. Now we're just painting by feel here. So. And take the belt and the pouches and the black. And then I think, even though Wolverine's boots are so blue, I like the. I really like this area being blue. I feel like it's a little too overpowering with the boots, too, though, so I might make the boots black. We'll see. We'll see how I feel once I finish this little part here. All right, what else we got going on here? Yep, and Ultron is the other, was the very first, actually, AI encounter we did. We did that back when everyone initially got stuck at home and were looking for ways to kind of enjoy Crisis Protocol and play the game. And so we put Pagani to work on figuring out an AI system for the first ultimate encounter that comes out of the core set. He did great at that too. And so this Unstoppable Colossus one 
will be our next one. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to, I think what I'm gonna do, actually, we'll cheat, we'll do both. We'll keep the boots blue, but we'll make this like over boot part black. That'll let us get some separation from the blue piping on the pants to the boot. So now we're doing a little bit more free form. Just making decisions that we think feel right. Which we can always go back and muss with later if we need to. Uh, as far as the Hulk ultimate encounter, I mean, you can, you can certainly from a development standpoint, create an AI for anything, but it comes down to like how smooth is the AI, how much additional work do the players have to put in and stuff. And the Hulk ultimate encounter definitely wasn't designed with the idea that, you know, it would, it would be AI'd and there's a lot more decision making for Hulk itself, I mean, so it's it's tough to say, honestly. Uh, we currently don't have any plans to revisit that one as an AI. I think if we were to do anything at this point, um, you know, it would be new experiences that were built specifically for supporting an AI. I'll just do these little knee pads in black. So we can always go back and do them in silver if we need to. Which is probably what we'll wind up doing. But this will work for the short term. Just get some colors laid down. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take a little bit of my base mixture of yellow, because that wash should be dry. I'm gonna mix in some cold yellow. I'm gonna make a highlight really quick. And we'll go back through and we'll highlight our yellow. A little bit of water to that. Then we'll come through and we'll highlight that blue. Or maybe, maybe we'll do a wash on the blue. I don't think it needs it. I think our blue is washy enough that we'll be okay. So, just gonna come in and... Hello, Hexiled Gaming. Welcome our new raiding overlords. How are you guys? Come to watch some honey badger painting? It's very exciting. All right. So we're just gonna continue to lay on some of this yellow highlight. I'm using my secondary brush now, so if I start talking funny, it's because I switched to my natural form, which is to have that secondary brush always available for cleanup and a little bit of blending. So this is let me work a little faster and efficiently as I knock in these yellow highlights. So I can just go in and blend them up, blend them out. If we decide that we went too far. Maybe right there, I can come back to my original color. And I can blend that in too. Let's make sure that it all looks 
nice and neat. One of the techniques I almost used today, but I need to do a test run of it first, probably just to figure out how I would approach it, is if you've seen a lot of the how to paint yellows, paint it pink, where you start with pink and then you follow up with the yellow and it's a great way to get really nicely shaded yellows. So I did a little research on that because I'm fascinated. Uh, and the video I watched looked really cool but required the use of an airbrush. And airbrush inks to really get the most out of it. And since I don't have an airbrush available when I do stream painting yet, Tony, Thought I'd wait for it because I got to practice using just like normal washes and stuff. Make sure that that technique will still work nice and smooth. I won't want to lead you astray. So sometimes if the technique is used a brush and I'd watch it with a brush. I'd feel a bit more confident, but it didn't. So kind of waiting. Blend these colors out. <laughs> I have no doubt. I mean, I've seen, I've definitely seen other folks do airbrush tutorials on line and videos and stuff. So I'm sure somebody as wise as Tony and backed up by someone as tenacious and powerful as Summer could figure it out. I put nothing past those two. But yes, there's definitely things that would have to get uh, straightened out so that you didn't listen to the of the air compressor the whole time. Well, that might be a good sleep sound. Just hitting it a little heavier on the elbow. And then blending out from there, kind of hitting that again. That mold line that I didn't do now is going to help me with the with faking some of that fabric fold feel. So you kind of see what's going on there. And in here. A little bit more of that base color because it's going to be darker since she's hunched forward in her aggressive posture pose. Knock that in. Blend that out. Come down here. Look for those edges. A little bit of edge highlighting on these parts. Use that other brush to blend it out a little bit. Keep working, Keep working. A soundproof box for the compressor, like a like a black box. I guess black boxes are indestructible. I don't know if they're soundproof, but maybe. If you got a long enough tube, you could put the compressor like super far away. I guess. I'm looking up right now. <laughs> Just run it all the way back to the main office so everyone. Everyone in the engineering station has to listen to it run, but we don't. Yep. Oh, they'd love that. I can feel the death glares from here. They're all team players there, but... Wow. You spoke for them real quick. It's Tony Konacek for you, ladies and gentlemen. Watching out for his, his fellow workers by not.
There. So there's our yellow. Strap into the ceiling. I don't honestly know if you could use a scuba tank, which is compressed air, as a replacement for like a normal air compressor. I guess you could, depend on the setup. I just want to knock in a little bit more, a little bit more yellow. Kind of adding some stretch lines and stuff to make it look more like fabric. Okay, let's go to the blue. So for the blue, I'm just gonna add white. And lighten it up. We have 13 minutes. We'll get the suit done, but I don't think I'm gonna get to the face, but that's okay. ambitious project here since we're doing all our highlighting and such this I just want to come in and add some add some highlights things look nice Highlights on the blue lines, piping. This side is just killing me. But I'll go back and fix it here in a second. Over here. Add that in like that. Come across the center. Go back in and clean that up here a little bit. Across the top. Like so. Clean that up. Blend that down. <laughs> yeah storm for those discussing storms i'm sure dallas might be mentioning you know there's there's this rule in life where you have to do things a couple of times before you figure it out you know experience is the best teacher and rogue or storm was definitely one where we had some very grandiose ideas and we really wanted to do something astonishing uh, with her and kind of represent her flight and her energy and all of that and you know we so we put our best minds to it our engineers worked really hard with the sculptors and stuff to come up with stuff and We knew that technically it would work and, you know, it did, but there were definitely ways to improve that. Lessons to be learned and taken away for the next time. Boy, oh boy, have we taken those lessons and I'm excited for everyone to see how that process has helped us evolve and where it's going to lead to next and all that stuff. but. You know, everything that we do is just another building block in our minds for what we're going to do next. And sometimes you got to be okay with pushing and reaching and maybe not coming up with the exact result you wanted. But I've never been disappointed in really anything that we've ever done. You know, 
it's always there's always lessons to be taken away for it and we make darn sure that we don't put out anything that we don't believe in but perfection is a dragon you never catch you just always chase it because that's what makes you better have been our thing from day one learn from the lessons take them and apply them to the next time and that's how we went from the corset to dr strange to ghost rider to storm to scarlet witch to hulkbuster all of those things all those characters and those designs we're all built on the backs of each other and learning lessons and sometimes those lessons didn't even come from like the last craziest thing we did. Sometimes it just came from somebody simple like honey badger here or anything else. You know, you'll be surprised what you'll learn or what you'll discover if you just keep an open mind and give each and every project You're all, even the seemingly small and rote ones can teach you a thing or two, if you let them. All right, there's that. All right, so we got the blue going on. I'm going to mix a little bit of my black with my blue. We're going to make a quick little highlight. I'm going to grab a little bit of this white. Yeah, that's it. That's the money. Let's see if I can fake a little bit of my own holder blue here. Maybe a little coal, coal black kind of action. Just come in, do some quick but effective edge highlighting just to help that black blue really pop. Those little dots of color that Dallas is so fond of. Those little pieces of life that let you know the thing is real. It has its imperfections and its reflections and everything else going on to it. Like there where our washed intake, we'll just turn that We'll mistake into like a strong point of highlight for interest and come back over here and hit a little bit of those, give it some life, some feels. Quickly run across the laces of those parts. Come back up here. Look at that. Top of the shoulders, uh, forearms, I guess. Biceps, biceps. Whatever, anatomy, Psh, didn't need it. People get stuck together. Look, I'm not trying to reassemble a human. really quick <clears throat> I suppose actually we can do 
something similar on our little knee pads here. Give them a little dot highlight. This little cutesy reflection thing. Like they're shiny. Why not? go one more time in that black a little bit of this extreme highlight here and just kind of dot in some of the edges and stuff little fake bits of life just a, a couple of those little highlights will really bring your blacks or your darker colors, any color really. It makes it feel a little bit more real because you do get those little random spot highlights on things. Those are a bit extreme, but it's because my paint's drying out on my brush. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be rushing this much, but I am. Because I only got three minutes left. Oh, I just really want to close it out here. So let's come back through. Something out like that. There we go. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm going to mix a little bit of my blue, a little bit of my black. I'm going to create a really quick kind of shade wash for my blues. And I just want to come in and glaze these blue areas. Just kind of bring them back down a little bit after those highlights. Let's smooth everything out. Tie all those colors together. It's a nice way to do it. Especially over here. We have those nice deep, those nice deep channel lines in between where the ribbing of the suit and everything else goes. So. And when we go too far, because it's nice and thin, we can just use our secondary brush. Clean it right up. Clean it right up. Clean it right up. Clean it right up. There we go. There. Come over to here. Right to here. Right here. Kick that. And get inside here. It's also a nice way to define the ribbing from the yellows. Interior is being blue as well. Just a quick thing like that. A really quick underlining like that. Just give that suit rib a really nice differentiation. Come back to our normal yellow. Just really quick line clean up right here. Just tighten that spot that we struggled with because it's on a weird side for the camera. Up. And come over here and do the 
Same thing here. Got a little sloppy right there, so we'll just clean that out. That little dot. Just cover it up like that. Blend it out a little bit. Hide our mistake, our shame. There's no shame. Clean up in here. One really quick thing, because I made a mistake over here. Just come back through. Got our black. All right. So there we go. <clears throat> One hour. We got the vast majority of her done. We still need to do the claws, the hair, and the face, but that'll go pretty quick. Get that X symbol painted up too with some red, which I don't have them on my palette. But overall, yellow, blue, black, not a bad looking homage to Granddaddy Logan for our honey badger. So hopefully you had fun there and enjoyed that. <clears throat> now do the face in 30 seconds. That's not gonna happen. I'm not Dallas Kemp. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Speaking of Dallas, be sure to come back tomorrow. He's going to be painting up some Star Wars stuff on tomorrow's stream, 1 p.m. Pacific. And, of course, we'll be back next Tuesday because we're not going to be doing game streams uh, on Thursdays as usual right now, just kind of letting the whole pandemic thing settle out in the area and trying to keep people safe. Uh, but we will be back next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific, for some more awesome painting. I will be painting Star Wars, and Dallas will be painting some Marvel stuff next week. So be sure to tune back in. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.